give you a better view. Okay, now I'm going to develop this into a somewhat round shape. So I'm going to use a 3 8 inch uh, spindle gouge. I don't want this thing to be perfectly flat. I've got it marked on where the inside is. I've got a little extra room here to allow about a quarter of an inch thickness on the top. So we're just going to put the speed up just a little bit. And then we're just going to pick up the cut here. Anchor bevel cut. parting tool to get it, get it flat. Back off just a little bit. Don't worry about the making that thinner where the handle is going to be. Uh, I just want to be able to pick up the curve a little bit here. So we're going to start it here. And we'll come back a little bit. A little more round. Okay, now we've got more of appearance of it being round. I'm going to go ahead and uh, sand this off a little bit before we texture it. So we'll do that off, off camera. Alright, I'm going to use a small spiraling wheel on this Sorby uh, spiraling system. And I've got it set in the first notch. Uh, we're cutting on center, so when we lift the handle up, we want it to be in a negative rake as a scraper. We're going to do this at about 400. And I've got this plenty thick. Actually, it's a little thicker than I'd like, but it gives me room for one more chance if, if this doesn't uh, cut it very well. We're just going to ease in here. Lift the handle. Keep, keep the cutter 90 degrees to the wood, so I'm going to bring it around. Twisting the handle with my left as I come around. And I've got a fairly clean cut. It wobbles a little bit, but that's okay. There's a bit of an art to this as well as, as, well as science. Now I'm going to come this side. I like to cut in the direction of the lower wheel, uh, the lower edge of the wheel. I'm going to turn this up just a bit. It's a very nice, very nice uh, husk uh, texture. You can't bring it all the way around because of the uh, changing that curve, change the shape. So what I do is I, I put a little line right here to define it and then I'll bring this down. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to take the parting tool now. And now I'm just going to get the speed up a little bit. Let's move this in just a little bit. Get the speed up, about a thousand. Come on back. Let me see just how how long I'm going to make that. I'm going to compare it to this knob. So. I want to need to go ahead and mark it a little bit better. Doesn't have to be identical, but I want to get a. I like the proportions on that other one, so it's going to come out to about there. 
that's where I'm going to take that part down to. So I'm going to work from here back. Before I do this, I'll get, get this in right here. Switch to a detail gouge, make it just a little easier to work my way back there. It's got much longer swept back grind. Okay, okay. Now I'm going to define this right here with that uh, pyramid tool. Just to give it a little definition. Ninety degrees of the wood. I'm hitting it on a curve. Don't have to go very deep. Now I'm going to pick up that cut with this detail guys to, to bring it around, round it off at that detail. Okay. It. I like it a lot. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and bring this down with a parting tool uh, quite a ways, and then we'll start shaping that knob. Okay, I've left. I don't know if you can see, you can't quite see it here. Behind here, I've got a little bit of a ring to continue that curve around. Again, using that, that detail gouge, I'm just going to give myself a little more height on the top of the box. Using that long swept back wing almost like a skew. Let me see if I can show you that a little bit better. Alright, let me show you what I'm talking about here. We're just going to get rid of some of this waste. going to finish that up again as I said when it's on the top of the box. So I'm going to go ahead and part this off. There we go. Alright, so there it gives you a, a kind of a feel for what it's going to look like and that that texturing we've, we've done. We've got a little more work here on the top and we'll do that again as we work on the base. Bottom. Now we've already measured the inside, you recall, and transferred that marking here so we know that's the inside. I need to come out a little bit further for the actual point of the box. So this is where we're going to actually part off the box right there. Before we do that, we're going to finish the top. We're going to use this as a thread block. And then we can we can decorate. Just a tiny bit of run out. Pick up the cut. Back to the detail gouge. I think sandpaper will take care of that. Cleaning that little round part just a little bit with this. Great. 
That'll make it considerably easier to, to sand. All right, now we're going to go back to I'll shape this handle a little bit. I think I want to make it just a little bit finer here since it's probably running off just a little bit, not running true. I'm just going to ease it. Okay, now we're going to take this part and change the shape just a little bit. Alright, we're going to sand this and then we're going to put just a bit of texture here on the very end. Alright, I want to crisp up the base of this bead just a little bit. It's a little too thick and I'll best do that with a skew. Speed up just a little bit, past 1200 maybe. And I'm just going to ease this in. Just a little bit of a line here I want to scrape out. Okay. Finish sanding that off and then we'll be ready to texture. I could use any number of texturing tools. I could even chatter it, but I don't like for something this delicate where I put this much time, I don't like the unpredictability of, uh, of chatter. Uh, so I'm going to use what tends to be very reliable and gives me an adequate uh, texture and that's this Wagner Wagner tool and I want to be able to lift the handle to, to impress it so there we go Get the speed up maybe 600 700 and we're just going to come in first I'm going to gauge one edge Hold it, and I'd like to for it to come out a little bit further. Let me see if I can get engage. Well, we're just going to move further out and do it again. Okay, there we go. We've got a nice, a nice swirl effect, and I think I'm just barely come in there. there that gives that some nice nice definition okay first thing I want to do is just ease this corner back just a little bit and I'm going to use that uh, my point tool again just to put just a tiny little chamfer there make it a little easier to sand it, sand it with that edge gone without having to worry about getting into the threads just enough where it feels comfortable in your hand and doesn't have a sharp edge. Okay. Next, I'm going to uh, go ahead and bring this down. Uh, I've got to finish the inside though with a little sandpaper. It's, uh, it's a little bit, bit, a little bit rough from that scraper work, so let me do that before I forget it. Okay, now that we finished the top. We're going to set that aside. We're going to go ahead and finish shaping the bottom. We're going to round off just a little bit into here. Then we'll shape it on back here. We've already marked the inside diameter. And there's the outside diameter. I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of parting cuts to kind of mark, mark where we're going to be uh, cutting to. Once you get somewhere around three quarters of an inch, you need to move over about a half a gouge half a uh, parting tool width so you won't doesn't bind. I don't want to go too far with this. I want to leave as much stability back here but I always like to have that line to start guiding my eye a little bit as to to the shape. So using uh, in this case a half inch uh, spindle gouge ABC anchor the tool, ride the bevel on the back slowly lift the handle until it cuts then move the flute in the direction of the cut. Now we're going to pick up the cut from this direction.
now I want to use my digital calipers to make sure the wall's not getting too thin here. No, I got lots of lots of room here to finish shaping that. As a safety measure, I want to keep this uh, disc depth caliper handy, so let me measure the inside. Since I've erased that mark, that parting mark, I want to know exactly how much room I've got. And I've got well, maybe a quarter of an inch, so I need to bring this around a little bit more. I think I'm going to switch to a little finer gouge. With a shearing shearing cut here. Bring that tool all the way around. Take that parting tool, take another quarter inch, give me a little more run down here. Before I get too thin, I want to do a little sanding. I think this may be a good place to, to stop and do a little sanding and then we'll pick it back up here. Okay, I'm going to part this off with this uh, spindle gouge and then we'll, we'll finish up because I'm going to have just a little bit of an issue there on the end and the tip and I'll show you how I'll do that with a jam chuck. You won't be able to see this very well but Let's cut away that last little bit. Okay. Yeah, actually, that's almost sharp enough, or uh, fine enough, where I could almost deal with that with a uh, with sanding. But I think I still want to put it on a jam chuck. So let's find let's find a jam chuck. We're going to make a traditional jam chuck. So I've measured the inside of the box. And we're just going to slow this down just a little bit. And we're just going to touch this tip right here. Yeah, it gives us a fair idea. Now I'm just going to use a uh, hole gouge here. I'm going to use the main ring. Switch to this wide beading and parting tool. Although this is side grain and it's going to do some tear up, I'm not really too concerned because of what we're doing here. Got my finger anchored under here to give me a little leverage. So I'm holding it down on the tool rest. Keep it nice and square. Now I'm going to chamfer the front just a little bit. That's going to be for my trial fit down here. Just come back a little bit. a little loose but I tell you what we're going to do we're going to, okay I got a paper towel that I dampened just a little bit we're going to slip that on there Okay, that's running true. Now we can go ahead and smooth that end off and do the last bit of sanding. Just let the wood come to the tool. Now we 
just go through the series of grits. I'll start with 180. And we'll sand the rest of it off camera. Okay, I've taken this off the chuck, and I mean, that thing is on there good. I could wait till in the morning to, to let it dry, but I'm afraid if I try to force it off, there's a possibility I crack it. So I'm going to be patient. What I did was take a little stick. I'd already had a hole drilled all the way through here just for this purpose. I rounded off the end of the stick, and I'm just going to stick this thing in here like that, and just tap it off. And that way I won't do any damage to the inside of the box. And, and there we go. Now I've still got to finish this. But there's, there's our box. Off camera what I did is I put a little uh, uh, cellulose lacquer sanding sealer on here and sanded it back to 500 uh, to give it a really nice uh, figure. And I think I'm going to probably finish this in my traditional antique oil. Uh, I'll probably put, uh, oh, maybe three, three coats on it, but I'm real pleased with it. Mm -hmm.